and I was sucked into that vortex. I actually probably was more of a fanboy of Greg Locke than anything else when it first started. Evil in these streets, but people, they keep walking. The government is hush-hush and preachers ain't talking. Everybody's quiet as a mouse because you don't get concerned unless it happens in your house. And if you are watching me today and you are following Pastor Greg Locke, I pray that you run from him and his unbiblical teaching because he is leading you and many people around the world straight to hell. Well, welcome to Real Talk with Jordan Riley, where the real talk does not come from me. It comes directly from God's word. And before we get started today, please consider subscribing to our channel, giving this a thumbs up, and supporting what we do by going to realtalkwithjordan.com. On today's episode, I'm gonna share with you how I got sucked into the vortex and the craziness that is Greg Locke, who supposedly is a pastor from Mount Juliet, Tennessee. It was scary, and thank God I was shown the truth, and God gave me the courage to confront him and to run from him. So are you ready? Let's go. Anybody else want to play games before I get to preaching? Huh? You better go ahead and do it right now, because it's going to be twice as bad here in a few minutes. You do it while I'm preaching. I'll take this microphone and bust you in the mouth with it in the name of God, because we ain't playing your stupid Democrat games up in this church. You hear me? If you're going to play games, you might as well pull your shirt off and be a big boy and do it right now. Huh? Go ahead, big girl. Come up here right now. If you're going to do it, you might as well do it right now. If I'm making you nervous, there's the door. You can get out. Don't let the door hit you when the good Lord splits you. You can get up out of this house right now. We ain't playing your games in this house. Get out. Now, what you just saw there, does that look like any example of a godly biblical pastor that we see anywhere in God's word? Absolutely not. The ranting, the raving, the screaming, the threatening, the anger, absolutely not. If you look at the biblical qualifications of a pastor in scripture, Greg Locke is absolutely disqualified. According to 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 11, and Titus chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. But sadly, I just about fell into this garbage right after I got saved. See, I used to follow Greg on YouTube and Facebook when he'd make his videos about Target or transgender bathrooms or whatever the social you know, issue was. He stood up and he fought for America, you know, and, and what I thought was godly principles. And I was sucked into that vortex. I actually probably was more of a fanboy of Greg Locke than anything else when it first started. At the same time, I was also a Christian singer trying to promote my my career. I wanted to do some big things for God. I wanted to be noticed and do things on a big scale. So I reached out to him with improper motives, by the way, and I got a hold of him. And we started to actually text back and forth. We started to kind of build a rapport. And so I, the plan was, here was the plan that I came up with and I actually ran it by him. I would perform concerts all around the southeastern part of the United States. And he would come with me and he would do the message. He would preach after I performed. And it was on. I mean, again, we were starting to build dates. We were contacting churches. We were starting to get venues that were coming online. It was going to be awesome. We were going to blow things way up. Again, with his social media platform and his influence that he would get from all his videos and attention they were getting. And the fact that he was a pastor and my music career and my songs that were reaching young people. It was on. We were going to do big things for God. <laughs> well, no. All things were good at the beginning. And I, again, like I said, I would text him regularly and he would text me back until I saw a video that he has left his wife. Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. Now I knew what the word of God said. Even though I had just became a Christian, I knew that what I saw in this video of him leaving his wife was not right and something was evil and deceptive in it. Greg blamed his wife and said that she left him and he cried and he made it look like he was the victim. He also claimed in a separate video that he had walked up to this tree near his church where he supposedly heard from God who told him to do this. Embarrassing. <laughs> so I sent him another text message asking him how I could pray for him and if everything was okay. 
Now, again, like I said before, he would text me right back. This time, nothing, no response. So I gave him some space. And then I saw on another website how he was supposedly dating a younger church secretary from his church. And I was like, hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. So I reached back out to Greg again. And I said, brother, this is not right. You are going against God's word. And again, for a second time, no response. So I said, fine. And I wrote him again and I said, I can no longer unite with you in ministry. If you're going to live in sin and go down this path, we cannot do ministry together. And again, for the third time, you guys, no response. Greg not only disqualified himself, according to 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 11, but he was now living in sin. He was practicing sin. It was a lifestyle that you could see. And according to 1 John chapter 3, verses 7 through 10, he, this is not of God. He was a child of the devil. Sadly, Greg would not respond to anything I said. No attempts, every attempt that I made, he would not respond until this happened. I decided to make a post about Greg Locke being a false teacher on my Facebook page. Now, this was a public display compared to the private text messages I had sent him in the past. Now, when this happened, when I published it, he lost his mind. And guess what? He came unglued and he reached out to me all of a sudden and his fangs were right there. He was upset. I made it clear that Greg, you are a false teacher, that you are living in sin and going against God's word. Also through this discussion, which he denied everything, he had excuses for everything, I was able to contact his ex-wife, Melissa. And I talked to her on the phone for over three hours to hear the truth of what happened. She was broken, she was candid, she was very transparent and honest. And I was able to hear from several people who went to that church in Tennessee, who knew Greg, who knew Melissa, who knew the situation intimately. And they corroborated and literally backed up everything Melissa said. And no one really has ever been able to back up what Greg has said. See, Greg got caught in sin. And instead of repenting and turning back to Christ, he doubled down on it. And now, where is he today? And by the way, I really liked him on the spot, on the spot. He's very dynamic, at one time Southern Baptist, mm -hmm. and I look at the way he's dressed, very spiffy. Yes. Anyways, Pastor, so glad you came. Thank you for having me. You know, I was actually Independent Baptist, which is a little bit more fundamental than, oh my goodness. than the Southern Baptist. Okay. And uh, literally 21 years ago, I wrote a book against you <laughs> for all the wrong reasons, because I had read and heard and, you know, watched all the out of context clips in those days. And I literally had no affinity whatsoever for anybody in healing ministry, deliverance ministry. I thought all gifts, miracles, tongues, signs, wonders ceased. I was Baptist amongst Baptists. I was an absolute cessationist. I was taught that the apostles had power. When they died, the power died with them. So when I would see you on TV, I would immediately have this bitterness that would well up in me towards anybody that was on you know, TBN or CBN or 700 Club. And the law. He called his book Blinded by Benny. <laughs> Blinded, Blinded by, by Benny. Benny. With the white suit on the front. With the white suit that works. <laughs> I'm pretty flamboyant now. Yeah, hey, I, I love it. It just took one day for you to rub off on me. But, uh, you know, I just, I really had an absolute aversion to anything that was supernatural. Wow. But the more I read the Bible, the more powerful the ministry of the Holy Spirit became. And so I tell people the theology of God's word ruined my man made theology. Wow. because I was always taught, well, you know, they just believe in experience over theology. But what I found out is that's not the truth. You believe in experiential theology. You believe your theology. That is really, really powerful. Yes. He's got a church now outside Nashville, thousands of people. Yes. What is it, 8,000 or something? Well, we've baptized 9,500 people in the last three years. We consistently run a couple thousand, 3,000 wow. in a tent. A, I saw the tent. Yeah, it looks quite nice. It's too. a three thousand seat tent. But you've got to hear this man. <laughs> you know, he'll he'll talk more about what happened with him. But it's really a needed ministry, and he mm. just did a movie. I like to talk about that. Yes, too. absolutely. But keep going. I'm enjoying. Yeah, it. yeah. Well, I, really, what happened is my wife and I are from two different worlds, 
She was saved out of a ditch of addiction. I was saved out of religion. So she didn't have to unlearn anything. So what would happen is we would lay in bed at night and she would read the Bible and she would like, honey, do you realize we have power to cast out devils? We have power yeah. to lay hands on the sick. Yeah. We have power to speak an unknown tongue. And I'd be like, eh, yeah, I know the Bible says that. And I'd be careful because I didn't want to back her in the corner and, and take her fire away from her because she was just so passionate. She was so innocent in what she was learning from mm. the Holy Spirit. And I was like, nah, well, let's throw the Jake breaks on. I don't want the invitation to go too long. If anybody falls out, somebody's going to see it on the live stream and think I'm Benny Hinn, right? <laughs> I mean, look at that error, you guys. He is friends and affirming and going along and being chummy with one of the biggest false teachers on the planet, Benny Hinn. I mean, again, even according to Benny, Greg used to hate Greg and Greg used to actually, you know, expose Benny Hinn, but now they're big pals and they agree and he's apologized to him. <laughs> what? Right, because the problem is for years, I pastored the church that my friends wanted me to pastor, Come not on. the one that my community needed. And the one my community needed was a full-blown deliverance church. That's what my community needed, right? So to make a long story short, I spelled cessationism all capital. I was Come against on. all tongues, all signs, all wonders, all deliverance. All of that had ceased. You know, I had my King James Bible and that was it. God didn't speak anymore. Well, the problem is God started speaking and things started happening Come in our on. church Come on. <laughs> that I had preached against for decades. Did you hear what Greg just said with false teachers, Isaiah Saldivar, that he used to be solid, that he used to just preach from the word and he used to reject all this stuff, but now he's seen the light. You know, now he is, you know, he just, he's like, just accepted all of charismatic doctrine. This is nonsense. According to 1 John chapter 2, verse 19, I believe that Greg Locke, it's possible that he was never a Christian to begin with because he has abandoned not only his wife, but sound teaching and the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Greg Locke is a charismatic con artist who claims to now prophesy because God told him to. I'm gonna do something very unusual right now. I don't do this a lot, so I need you to buckle in for a minute. Everybody okay? So I'm gonna prophesy for a minute because the Lord told me to. What a load of nonsense. Greg Locke is a false teacher who makes up things in his head. And he is an angry person who hates God and hates God's word. And I hope you're not dumb enough to believe that sheep shot nonsense. Go ahead, cut me off, YouTube. Cut me off, Facebook. They can cut this live stream off. We'll be live every single week right here under this tent. Y'all just have to get here a lot quicker. Some of you might as well move here anyhow because all hell's about to break loose. We're going to feed people, house people, clothe people. we get in a garden, praise God. We're going to feed some folks. By the way, I got more ARs in my safe than I've ever had in my whole life. We're going to protect everybody up in this house. I said we're going to protect everybody up in this house. Yeah. 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 Get out if you don't like it. I don't care. Now, I want to make it clear that it was by God's grace and God's grace alone that I was able to run from Greg Locke. It wasn't my intellect or my decision or any of my efforts. No, it was the grace and mercy of God. And if you are watching me today and you are following Pastor Greg Locke, I pray that you run from him and his unbiblical teaching because he is leading you and many people around the world straight to hell.